everyone is struggling to sleep these days either because of too much work or late night parties scrolling through social media or just too much stress you ask anyone and there seems to be some complaint regarding sleep so is it a big deal and what are some things you can do to sleep better that's what we're going to talk about in today's video hi everyone i'm dr siddharth warrior i'm a neurologist and welcome back to my youtube channel where we talk about neuroscience and everything in today's video i'm going to tell you some things about sleep and five things you can do to sleep better let's go why is sleep important Sleep is an essential function of the body involved in both rest and restoration of all our body's function. Think of your brain as a factory constantly producing new products, then sleep is when all the garbage gets taken out. This system is called as the glymphatic system. So when you don't sleep, imagine all those toxic metabolites getting accumulated in your brain like clutter. eventually this increases the risk of problems like memory loss alzheimers and even heart attacks and strokes poor sleep is also associated with lack of focus poor learning brain fog and even increased blood pressure so clearly not having good sleep can lead to a lot of issues so what does sleeping well mean Ideal sleep includes 5 sleep cycles where each sleep cycle is for 60 to 90 minutes. Now what does a sleep cycle mean? Our brain goes through different stages of sleep called as NREM and REM. Now each sleep cycle has one NREM and one REM and each of this would last for around 90 minutes. So doing the math five sleep cycles would mean sleeping for around 7 to 8 hours and that is considered as ideal now out of your total sleep duration the deep sleep should be around 1 to 2 hours or 20% of your total sleep and that is when the maximum rest and restoration happens so why can't people go to sleep For this you have to understand the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is the housekeeper of your body. It has two parts the called as the sympathetic and parasympathetic. The sympathetic is responsible for the fight and flight. That is the part that responds to stress. So whenever you are feeling threatened or stressed out, that is when your body shifts into sympathetic. Whereas parasympathetic is responsible for your rest and digest. Whenever you are feeling calm, relaxed, your body shifts into parasympathetic. So as you may guess, when you go to sleep, your body has to shift from sympathetic to parasympathetic. And the easier the shift happens, the better and easier you can go to sleep. Most people have trouble going to sleep because they are not able to make this transition from sympathetic to parasympathetic. So how can you fall asleep an analogy that i found very useful is parking a car now imagine you are driving a car at full speed at 100 km an hour and you need to park the car at 10 pm would you still drive the car at 100 km even till the point of parking you wouldn't right that would not be possible instead you would start slowing down around half an hour before you will start searching for a parking spot and when you've reached the parking spot you will slow down stop and ease into your parking spot and switch off your car ignition think of sleep in a similar way if the time for your sleep is 10 pm you cannot be driving your brain at full speed till 9:55 in fact you should start slowing down half an hour to 1 hour before sleep so that you're switching your brain from sympathetic to parasympathetic well in advance so if you have trouble going to sleep here are five things you can do and i would suggest doing all five of them number 1 is tapping into your circadian rhythm the circadian rhythm is the cycle of changes that your body goes through in keeping with the sun so your body is different in the morning in the noon in the evening and at night and this changes happens because of clocks that are inside your body so your body already knows what time it is if you can just tap into it now the problem happens when you are exposed to too much bright light at night your body gets confused on whether it is morning or night so one way of tapping into your circadian rhythm is by dimming your lights at night start switching your lights from bright white 
to warm golden lights as the evening goes on and as you get closer to your bedtime start switching off lights maybe switch over to candlelight so that your brain knows that things are getting darker and it is time to go to sleep another hack that i have used is to take a walk outside after dinner this way when you take a walk outside you're walking in the dark and your brain automatically makes the cue that it is night and it is time to go to sleep think of bracketing your sleep with light that is before you go to sleep it should be completely dark and when you wake up you should expose yourself to bright sunlight so going outside and getting exposure to sunlight after you wake up is a great way of training your body to get into circadian rhythm and finally being aware of your sleep cycle is very important so at night that first moment when you feel sleepy for the first time is key because that is your body telling you that this is the time for you to sleep every time you push through that and keep working or keep partying your circadian rhythm gets off by a little bit more so try to go to sleep the first time you feel sleepy and you'll feel yourself more in sync with your circadian rhythm step number 2 of going to sleep better is reducing your sympathetic activity in the body like i told you sleep is a parasympathetic activity but unfortunately a lot of things that we do before sleeping is sympathetic this makes it harder for the body to switch from sympathetic to parasympathetic for instance here are some of the sympathetic activities that you might be doing before sleeping eating is a sympathetic activity drinking coffee is sympathetic drinking any cold drinks with caffeine in it is sympathetic scrolling through social media and getting into arguments with people on twitter is sympathetic having a fight with your partner or your friends is sympathetic stressing out over your work planning what you will do the next day all of these are sympathetic activities is it any wonder that your brain finds it difficult to switch from so much sympathetic into sleep directly so what are some things you can do to avoid so much sympathetic activity first of all avoid caffeine or coffee intake after 12 o'clock in the afternoon this is because caffeine has a half life of 4 to 6 hours and so even after 8 to 10 hours of drinking coffee those molecules are still in your body and that can interfere with your sleep quality the same principle will also apply whether you're drinking tea or you're drinking heavily caffeinated drinks like diet coke coke or red bull and also try avoiding the other sympathetic activities like scrolling in bed you're just making the task more difficult for yourself step number 3 for getting good sleep is increasing the parasympathetic activity in your body and here are some ways of achieving this number 1 is a breathing exercise called 478 breathing in which you inhale for 4 seconds hold your breath for 7 seconds and exhale slowly over 8 seconds this breathing pattern slowly switches your body into a parasympathetic state i'll link some references below if you want to follow this a second way of doing this is progressive muscle relaxation this is a technique that reduces stress and anxiety in your body by slowly tensing each muscle in your body and then relaxing it this exercise allows you to get into a state of relaxation and pushes your body into parasympathetic and helps you sleep better there is a popular technique in yoga called shavasana which is great for switching your body into parasympathetic and allowing you to sleep in fact every time i have done yoga and eventually gone into shavasana position i have invariably gone to sleep so this is something that i would highly recommend and finally if you are somebody who overthinks a lot and has a lot of thoughts going on that prevents you from sleeping just try to journal it down note it down in a notebook don't try to solve the problems but just the act of putting it somewhere outside your body can help you relax because now you know that you can come back to it whenever you want to so keep a notebook and pen next to your bed and if you're thinking too much just note down your thoughts put it away and you'll find that you can sleep more easily now step number 4 of getting good sleep is setting your environment environmental factors play a big role in the quality of your sleep and many people ignore this we think that sleep is all in our heads but remember that our body responds to the environment and if there is too much stress or threat around 
you can't sleep. So make sure that you're going to sleep in a place that makes you feel safe. The room temperature should be slightly on the cooler side. Around 20 to 23 degrees would be great. Noisy surroundings can make sleep difficult. So use sound absorbing curtains or noise cancelling earbuds and they will make a big difference in the quality of your sleep. Blackout curtains are great for ensuring quality of sleep because external light through the window can interfere with your sleep quality. Especially if you've gone to sleep late and you want your seven to eight hours of sleep, use blackout curtains to ensure that your later half of sleep is not disturbed. And another key factor in environment is partners snoring. This is especially true for married couples. And if your partner snores, they may be getting good sleep, but you will not. So if that is the case with you, Talk to them, have an honest conversation and get them checked out for any issues that they might be having. And finally, point number five in ensuring good sleep is physical symptoms. Now, there are some physical disorders that interfere with sleep and it is essential to get these checked out. Number one in the list is obstructive sleep apnea. This is a problem where when you sleep, because of pressure on your trachea, your breathing is not optimal. So your body is not getting enough oxygen. Your brain is not getting enough oxygen. And this leads to snoring and a lot of other issues like blood pressure, increased risk of stroke, memory loss and poor sleep quality. So if you are having any of these symptoms, do get yourself checked out by a sleep specialist because the treatment is available. Other problems like thyroid dysfunction, urinary tract infection, or diabetes causing repeated urination at night, all of these things can also interfere with sleep. So visit your doctor, get yourself checked out because all these problems do have solutions. So these are five things that you can do to get good sleep. I cannot stress enough how important getting good sleep is. So I hope that all these points work for you and you sleep better because of this. Share this video with others if you found this useful. Hit the like button. Tell me if this video has been useful to you in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone. Take care.